Another guy whose stats have never been diluted. When he plays, he plays at a high level. Vikings receiver Justin Jefferson. They tried to get him signed to a second contract before the 2023 regular season began. That ultimately did not happen. Now he's entering fifth year. The option, good money, not as good as T. Higgins as the franchise tag player. We'll talk about him in a minute. But still, the Vikings trying to get something done. Jefferson not present for the first day of offseason workouts. Here is head coach Kevin O'Connell talking about his star receiver. Are you anticipating having um, Justin here for any of the offseason stuff? Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really not anticipating uh, whether, you know, taking it a day at a time. And, and I know uh, I've had a lot of great dialogue with Justin throughout even the early part of this offseason and, and leading up. So, you know, my hope is we can get him get him around the team. He's obviously such a special player, but it, it goes beyond that, especially this time of year, um, because of just the energy and, and, and the flat out way he comes in when he's in this building and he goes to work and, and how his teammates respond to him. He is not here today, um, but, uh, you know, we'll remains to be seen kind of what the, the rest of the program looks like. Just get the guy paid. Like again, every day you wait, it's going to get more expensive. What, what what are you waiting for? And it makes me think that that he's potentially in play if they get some opportunity to make some move that is going to blow us all away, and they're going to go up to number two and get Jaden Daniels, or dare I say, go all the way to number one and get Caleb Williams. Although that would make no sense for the Bears now that they've got both Keenan Allen and DJ Moore. But I just feel like, and I said this last year. Going into the 2023 season. Yeah. It's Kirk Cousins last year, right. although I ultimately came to the point where I wished it wasn't. And if they don't sign Justin Jefferson to a contract before the start of the 2023 regular season, he is in play for a potential trade that would allow the Vikings to get their first true franchise quarterback since Fran Tarkenton retired in the late 70s. And that still isn't done yet. Until they get a deal done with Justin Jefferson, that is a possibility. Even though they say, oh, we have no intent to trade Justin Jefferson, it's still a possibility. And, like, what are you waiting for at this point, Minnesota Vikings? If you want this guy, get it done. It's only going to get more expensive. Why would you want to wait? Look at all the teams that signed their franchise tag players before the start of offseason workouts. Why? They're in the building. They're helping us get ready for the coming season. So if you're going to pay the guy anyway, just pay him now. Just get it done. Do what you have to do to get it done. And I'm, I will – we've got nine days. Counter was up. If he's going to be traded, it's going to happen in the next nine days. And it's going to be – to, I would say, the commanders of the Patriots to allow the Vikings to go up to number two or number three. And I sure as hell wouldn't use him in a deal to go up to number three. I'd want to go all the way up to number two and get Jaden Daniels if I'm giving up Justin Jefferson at this point. Definitely. And I'm not saying they're going to. Right. I'm not saying they should. All I'm saying is, damn it, if you want this guy, quit dicking around and pay him. I, 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 I mean, you know I agree with you, right? Now, the, the weird one with Justin Jefferson... And I know you've heard this, and I've heard this as well, that they made him a deal, right, before the start of last year that was going to still make him the highest paid receiver in football then, right? It feels like Justin Jefferson wants a contract that wants to blow the market away, right? A contract that Mike's, makes Mike Florio re, you know, uh, redo his article on receiver money and go, oh crap, look at this. This one really is 30 million a year or 32 million a year. I, it, it feels that's what, like, if I pay attention to the landscape of the NFL, that's what it is. Now, I don't know that for sure. I haven't heard from anybody directly in the Minnesota Vikings or his agent or anything like that that makes me believe that, but it just feels that way from what we heard last year. Now here we are to this point. The Jamar Chase thing, I think, complicates things as well. I do think that's very real, that Justin Jefferson wants to make sure he's paid a little bit more than Jamar Chase. I think that's a real competition and a you know status symbol type of thing there. But, I mean... Yes, pay him. Special. I mean, come on. We're it's this is one of the most incredible guys in our league right now. I think it's a no-brainer. 
And I think you're onto something, too, because, look, I was poking around about this after the Super Bowl when yeah. we had Justin Jefferson with us. Uh, where, where the hell were we this year? Where we're in Las Vegas. Damn, where you are we? getting. Las Vegas. Oh, oh, oh. I, it's starting. <laughs> it's starting. That's like, twice in two days. You've forgotten where Damn. the hell you're talking uh, about. What you're doing. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. I'm doing my best. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. I, I was I, I'm, I'm trying to think of how I can properly word this, but I started poking around and some of the pushback was, do you have a, do you know what he turned down? Which which tells me that the Vikings exactly. think they they made him a more than fair. Those offer are kind of the they really I've don't heard. know what to right. do at this point. Right. You know, when Shefty puts out there, he turned down 30 million a year. That's not something that his side is putting out. There. Exactly. That's the kind of stuff that the team puts out there to justify their failure to get the deal done. Right. Don't blame us. We offered him thirty million per year. Now that was probably thirty million per year in new money, but still it would be a healthy deal and it wouldn't be a Fugazi thirty million per year like that forty five final year from Tyree Kill that drives the number up dramatically. It's probably a real thirty. But the issue has been structure. I think they're gonna have to guarantee the first three years of the deal and they don't want to do it. To that, I say, you better do it. Yeah. Look, you pulled a ticket in the draft that is a lottery in 2020, and you got a winner. What are you going to do with that winner? And we know how it works in this game. When you get the big winner, when you win the jackpot, it means you've got to pay the jackpot to the player. That's what you got to do. So what are you going to do? You're going to do what the Titans did? You're going to do the? You're going to trade him and draft another receiver? You got lucky when Stephon Diggs wanted out. And then, boom, you get Justin Jefferson. That, that's not going to happen again. Last time they did that, it was Randy Moss out and Troy Williamson in. Who's Troy Williamson? Exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. right. So no, don't I'm, play that game. Right. Don't play that game yep. unless the strategy is, okay, we're going to trade him, and this is going to get us Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels. And it's not going to get him Caleb Williams, but maybe it could get him Jaden Daniels. Maybe that would be the case. But whoever – what trade form is going to have to going to have to somebody's going to have to pay him somebody's going to have to pay him and he deserves it he clearly deserves it so i, I hey it's uh, the bottom line for the vikings is the longer you wait it's not going to get cheaper it's only going to get more expensive yeah and i think i think his camp would take devonte smith's deal and and make all the arguments as to why devonte smith getting what he got supports justin jefferson who is clearly better Getting whatever he's looking for. Yeah, I, I, I mean, probably you're right. He he could use it to go. Wait, I mean, Devonte Smith is really good, right? The numbers, yeah, they're like CD Lamb. Here's mine. It's a different stratosphere. Welcome to Justin Jeffersonville. Time to pay up. I mean, I, I'm with you there too. And you know, to me, like, hey, you you by all due accounts, I think we all think they're in the market for a quarterback and trying to figure that out. I, I mean, what a better way to start a new quarterback's run with your football team than to have a support system like Justin Jefferson and K.J. Osborne and get that going with an offensive coach and make one side of the ball so elite and so strong like the early days of Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs that it makes the other team kind of bend the whole way they play because they're like, whoa, they're so good here. We're actually – our offense has to play differently because their offense is so good. You know, there, there's something to that. We've talked about that in the past, having one unit so elite that it changes the way every team plays you. But all I know is this right now. We are in a league right now that is still a passing league. We know that. And we are seeing here in recent history that, you know, wide receiver play is pretty conducive to teams going to the Super Bowl. There's only one guy so far that's shown me he can go to the Super Bowl and win that game without top-notch receivers in modern-day football, and that's number 15 in red. That's the only guy, and he's got some other things that help do that, but he's magical. But you go to anybody else, Rams, it's Cooper Cup and Stafford and OBJ, right? They got that working. We talk, the Bengals were in that Super Bowl. The Eagles, of course. The Bucks went in the Super Bowl with those receivers. The 49ers in the Super Bowl with those receivers, right? That's where we are in the league right now. Receivers, the top quality ones there, the top teams, they got guys like that. You know, you, you, you can even go to the championship games this past year. So, um, yeah, there's something to be said about that, and that's where I think there's great value when you know you got one and you don't want to be doing the neck twitch like Mike Vrabel getting rid of this guy. I wouldn't want to do that. 
and you know, people may be hearing me muse about the possibility of the commanders trading for Justin Jefferson. Well, what, they clearly need a quarterback. It's not going to be Marcus Mariota. Well, they'd come out of it with the 11th overall pick, and they would take a guy there or move up the board from 11. You know, just because you move down, you're not stuck there. Yeah. You can move down to 11, right. and then you can come back up and get – Drake May or whoever is exactly. still on the board right. if you're willing to not take Jaden Daniels if that's who the Vikings decide they want and they're willing to give up Justin Jefferson one LSU guy to get another LSU guy but until they get the deal done this it's crazy to think a trade isn't in play for Justin Jefferson because why else would you be waiting to do the deal we're going to talk later in the show about quarterbacks that potentially will end up in Minnesota. Kevin O'Connell talked about that yesterday. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.